I'll be teaching you guys how to make these beautiful little ladybird appliques. Um, in my Mug Cozy video, those were decorating the Mug Cozy I used as an example, um, but they can be really gorgeous decorations for any um, crafting that you'd like to do. Um, they're a lot easier and a lot quicker than the Mug Cozy, so a nice little thing to do of an afternoon. Right, so what we need to make this little guy is some red wool, some red yarn just here, some black yarn, a three millimeter crochet hook, and a darning needle. So a darning needle is just a needle with a very large hole in the top just there, um, and that is just so that you can fit your wool through it. So, and we also need scissors, so remember those. Right, so we're going to start with our red yarn, so you can put everything else to the side, including the darning needle, don't lose it. What we need to do is do a magic circle again. So um, just like my previous video, um, you drape the yarn over the front of your hand like so, you wrap it around like so, crossing it over the front of your fingers and leaving it parallel on the back. Then you hold it all in tight in place. Go underneath the front section, hook round the back and twist just like so. And then we hook round that top left corner of the X. I'm going to let everything else drop as you can see. Hold on tight like that and pull through. I've actually found it easier recently to do it like that, dropping it all off my hands, because uh, it means that I can easily get the um, loose yarn through the hole, through the loop. Uh, otherwise, it can be a bit too tight. So we actually start this the same way as we start our mug cozy. So um, if you remember, if you did watch the mug cozy video, um, uh, then we do it the exact same way. What we need to do is working within our magic circle we need to do uh, six single crochets so we go through the magic circle pick up bring through we've got two on the hook pick up again bring through the magic circle is a little bit loose so what i'm going to do is just tighten it up slightly there we go and then we do five more of those so through the magic circle pick up we've got two pick up again, we've got one, through, pick up, through, pick up, take through both, through, pick up, through, pick up, take through both. That is four, <laughs> then I need to do two more, through, pick up, through, pick up, take through both, through, pick up, through, pick up, take through both. There we go. So now we can pull our magic circle nice and tight. We've got the center of our beautiful ladybug. So what we need to do is find our first stitch, our first little V shape just here and stick our crochet hook through that. Then we do 12 stitches around and doing that we need to do two stitches, uh, two single crochets in every stitch. So we uh, pick up and bring through, then we've got two, we pick up and bring through. Then we do uh, one more single crochet into the same stitch. And then we move on to the next. So we do two single crochets in this, so this is three. And four into the same stitch. On to the next one, five, Ooh. and six into the same stitch. On to the next one, seven, eight into the same stitch. On to the next one, nine, ten into the same stitch, onto the next one, 11 and 12 into the same stitch. 
So now you can see the centre of your um, ladybug, the circle, is just a little bit loose. So pulling that magic circle string nice and tight will close that up and will mean that we have a nice solid circle rather than a one with a hole in the middle. So then we need to uh, make it slightly bigger. So in order to do that, we need to increase our stitches slightly. So that means we do a round of uh, one single crochet in the next stitch and then two single crochets in the following stitch. So it just goes like that. One single crochet, two single crochets, and on until you've had 18 stitches. So I will count those for you. So into our next V-shape, we do one single crochet, and then into the following V-shape, we do two single crochets. So that's two and three, stitch numbers two and three. Then we move on, do stitch number four in the next stitch. And then we do stitch numbers five and six in the following stitch. There we go. Then we move round again, do stitch number seven in the next, and eight and nine in the next. Moving round again, stitch 10 in the next, and then moving round again, 11 and 12 in the next. Moving round again, we've got 13 in the next, and then 14, 15 in the next. And then our final three, we've got 15, not 15, sorry, 16 in the following. And then we move round to the next for 17 and 18. There we go. So we've got a nice centre to our ladybird. Um, it's probably as big as you need to go, but if you just want to follow the mug cosy pattern to make it bigger, you are absolutely welcome to. Now what we want to do is change uh, colour of wool. This can be quite daunting, uh, the thought of doing this, but honestly it is as easy as pie. What we want to do is just push our red wool to the side for now. We don't need to cut it or anything. We bring our black wool in. I'll just place this down and show you what you need to do. So what you need to do is just drape the black wool over your finger like so, and then hold it tight to get a little loop like that. And in order to change color on your crochet, you literally just need to hook around that loop and pull through the stitch you've already got. Then you'll need to pull tight on the red yarn just to make sure that that stitch is nice and tight. And then pull tight on both sections of your black yarn and it's as easy as that you've changed color just like that so in order to keep everything nice and tight i recommend holding down all your loose strings or your loose bits of yarn just on the back of your ladybird like so so this means that you can keep everything tight um, and you're not losing the stitch that you've just made when you carry on so hold everything else down on the back of your ladybird and Take your working yarn like so. Then we want to do a single chain stitch. So a chain stitch, I'm going to move the black wool just out of the way slightly. There we go. A chain stitch is just picking up the working yarn like so and taking through the stitch that's already on your hook. This is just so that this uh, endy piece of black yarn just here doesn't try and pull its way through the existing stitch and loosen up and make everything sad. So now we're going to go around the entire circle again, just doing slip stitches. So slip stitch is like a single crochet, except you don't complete it the same way. So holding all the loose bits of yarn just tightly on the back of your ladybug like so, you find your next V-shape just here. You stick your crochet hook through and pick up your working yarn. And then you've got two on your hook like so. But what you don't want to do is pick up again. We actually want to take that same bit of yarn that we've pulled through the existing stitch and pull through 
the hoop that was already on our hook. It's got a slip stitch because it doesn't actually make anything bigger. It doesn't um, add too much to the work itself, but it means that you can move on um, with the crochet. You can move to the next bit quite easily. So you want to do that all the way around. So every single stitch in the circle, stick your crochet hook through, pick up the working yarn, pull it through again, and then pull it through the hoop that's already on the hook. So we do this all the way around, like so. You'll find that the um, black layer does start to move sort of in front of the red layer slightly, um, but that's absolutely fine. It's just because we're doing slip stitches, so we're not working outwards, we're working sort of along. And when you um, embroider this into your work, um, it, you just push the black bit down and you can't see any red bit at all anymore. So we're just slip stitching all the way around. So we've made it round to the black yarn again. Really don't worry if your uh, yarn is curling in slightly. You can um, see just here, it looks uh, like the red yarn is actually creating another border. But if I just sort of pop that through like so, so sort of push the back side through. Just like that, the black yarn takes precedence. So if you like at this point, you can chop off the um, rest of the yarn from your, uh, red yarn, sorry, from your ball of wool, if it's getting annoying for you. I tend to leave it to the end, but I will chop it off just to show you that it can be done. You don't need to leave a huge tail, but I'll just do so. So you can see what I'm doing here. So once, once we've uh, made our way all the way round, we need to stick our um, crochet hook into the black uh, stitch, the black um, slip stitch that we did at the beginning of this circle, um, just to connect the black to the black. And as you can see, we've got a lovely black border that goes all the way around our ladybird. So you can see from my example that the ladybird has a little head on my example it's a bit of a wonky head but I will show you how to do the head now it's really simple just using uh, single crochets and chain stitches so uh, in order to move outwards we want to do another chain stitch so that's picking up the working yarn and pulling through our existing loop on the hook then we want to find the next um, black stitch on our circle so these are going to be quite tight because they are slip stitches rather than chains, uh, rather than single crochets. So just be patient with yourself um, and try and slip that um, crochet hook through both sides of the V. Then we're going to do a single crochet. So we're going to pick up the uh, working yarn, pull it back through the stitch. There we go. It can be quite tight, so just give it a little wiggle. And then pick up the working yarn again and take through both of those. So we're going to do that four more times. So just working around very gently, very slowly, finding those um, V shapes. Whoop. <laughs> just knocked my camera. Finding those V shapes, pulling through the working yarn up again and pulling through. Two more times, finding the v-shape, going through, picking up, coming back through, picking up again, and coming through. Once more. There we go. So we started to work slightly outwards, I don't know if you can see. We need to carry on, uh, so we do another chain stitch, we pick up again, pull through the existing loop on the hook, and then we turn the entire work. So what you want to see in front of you is the messy back that has all of the loose strings on it. Then what you want to do, just have a look here, you can see, it comes into focus, 
that um, there is a v-shape right next to the loop that's on the hook you don't want to go into that one you want to skip that one and move straight on to the next to do your first single crochet so stick your crochet hook through there pick up take through pick up again and take through both and then because we want to be making the head slightly smaller as we work outwards uh, we skip the next stitch completely move on to the next and we do our next single crochet like so and then the final one we just do another single crochet like so there we go got one more row to do on the head so we do the exact same thing we do a chain stitch and turn the work once again if you find that your um, uh, hook the the loop on your hook is getting a bit twisty you can just turn the hook around like so and sometimes that helps so uh, again we don't want to go into the first v-shape near the hook we go into the next one and do our first single crochet in the row like so we skip the middle stitch and we just do another single crochet into the final stitch just there there we go Ooh, got a yarn that's liking to split on me there we go so now what we want to do is just tie off and i'll show you how to do the um pattern on the front and that includes the darning needle so to tie off you just pick up go through like you're doing a chain stitch and in this you want quite a lot of um a tail because you're going to use that wool um, as the wool that you use to do the embroidery so just pull tightly like so probably want about about that much yarn by that much i mean we're gonna chop off just here don't worry if it's not enough you can just use another end to the yarn and then you just got to pull that off and voila. So we've got this beautiful ladybird, but it's got quite a few stringy bits on it, as you can see. Also, where we've tied off at the front, uh, this top, sorry, uh, we've got a little sort of pointy bit. What's nice about using the tail for your embroidery is that you just fold that down to start embroidering. And you lose that little pointy bit on the top. There we go. So uh, we want to thread our darning needle. So if we just grab it from over here. Threading a needle is like one of the hardest things known to man. So just be patient with yourself, especially if you've got a wool that likes to split. And what we want to do now is take that um, uh, loose yarn and just stick it right in the top of the ladybird, just like there, just where the black meets the red. There we go, and pull down as much as needed to get rid of the sort of spiky bit on the top of your ladybird. There we go. Just like that. And we continue to work in a running stitch all the way down to the bottom. So that is just going through, keeping away from all of the other loose bits of yarn on the back. And then we come through the middle just here. And then we work back on ourselves to connect it up. And then we come through the middle again, just making sure that it all stays connected. So it's one long line down the middle of the ladybird. There we go, I've got a bit of red covering that, but that's absolutely fine. And then we Get right down to the bottom, stick our needle through and connect up the line just like that. If it's a bit messy, that's absolutely fine. If you need to go back over it, that is also absolutely fine. It is literally just however you like to do it, really. I can see here the middle of mine is not the most neat. So what I'm going to do is just come back through the middle here and just go over that line just once more. Make sure that you can see it's a lovely middle 
line to the ladybird like so. So now what we want to do is our four spots. I'm going to do four. You can do three or two or seven if you can fit them. Um, but I'm going to do four um, because I think I like symmetry. What I want to do is end up uh, with my last spot right here next to the other working yarn. Sorry, the, the tail of the yarn um, because then I can tie off quite easily and it'll be nice and neat. So I'm actually going to start up the top here. Sticking my needle in. Spots are really easy. You just want to do a couple of parallel lines. So you just go over like that. And then right next to it, you want to do one that is roughly the same. Just like that. And you've got a spot. Easy peasy. So I'm going to do four more of those. I need to pull my wool slightly. Like I said, if you're running low on uh, working yarn, working wool, uh, feel free to use the other tail or um, you can just get some more. I mean, you don't have to use the uh, tail from your crochet to do the stitches. It's absolutely fine. There we go. So you can see here I've finished my spots with not very much yarn to go actually. So it's quite convenient that uh, I had enough. Um, if you want to like leave more than enough just to make sure that you've got uh, enough to do however many spots you'd like. So now we just want to tie off like we have done before. So take both black pieces of yarn and just tie them together. Not too tightly that your ladybird would fold but not too loosely that it will come apart. Because this is an applique, all of this will get hidden once you sew it onto whatever it is that you'd like to sew it onto. There we go. And I do three there just to make sure it's nice and tight. And do the same with the red yarn. Make sure that that center one is just nice and tight from where you did the magic circle. What I've done here is um, trap one of my yarns underneath a black stitch. There we are, and then you just want to chop off all those loose ends. So, just grab my scissors. There we go. And there we are. That leaves us with a beautiful little ladybird applique and you can make as many of these as you want so um, they make really gorgeous decorations for the mug cozies i've shown you in the previous video um, but also any crochet thing that you would like to make um, it's a really nice little mini um, decoration 
that you can do when you're darning it onto whatever uh, crochet you've decided or whatever knitting you've decided it's literally just using the darning needle and doing a running stitch all the way down making sure it's nice and tight and taking the edges of those um, black stitches down to the bottom so it cuts out all the excess red on the side so there we are. I hope you've enjoyed making these lovely ladybirds and I look forward to seeing all your creations. As always, if you've got any questions, just pop them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer.